In this lesson, we'll learn how to compute powers of a matrix. Just think of it for a second. Pretend that you have a matrix like A, and we're raising it to the power of something else. Like for example, if we have A and we have a two by two matrix, it's being raised to the power of three, we wanna find out what A to the power of three is. As you know, when it comes to multiplying matrices, depending on the dimension of the matrix, it could actually take a long time to finish. So this is a two by two matrix and finding A to the power of three isn't bad manually, but there's gotta be a better way if the matrix was being raised to an even higher exponent. Take for example, 10 or, or 40 or whatnot. In that case, we exploit what we've learned about diagonalization and use what we've learned about eigenvalues and vectors to make this process easier. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you in this video. So the question is, given the matrix A, find A raised to the power of three using the method of diagonalizing the matrix. I've given this question a difficulty rating of hard because there's a lot of work involved. We have to start off by finding the eigenvalues, then the eigenvectors, and then using the eigenvectors, produce the matrix P, find its inverse, and multiply it to the diagonal raised to the power of five. It's a lot of work, and here's how it's done. First, we find the eigenvalues. To find the eigenvalues, we find the determinant of this expression. A minus lambda times its identity is equal to zero. So we have five, three, seven, and one. We'll be subtracting this from lambda times the identity matrix, which is the diagonal matrix with the ones across. We'll end up with the following five minus lambda, three, seven, and one minus lambda. That's our brand new matrix. And according to the following formula, we need to find its determinant. To find the determinant of a two by two matrix is not that bad. We multiply this diagonal, the elements in this diagonal, and we get the following. And we subtract it by the product of that diagonal, which is 21 set that equal to zero because this is equal to zero. Bring that over, we have a quadratic. And if you solve the following equation, you should end up with two values of lambda, namely eight and negative two. Now keep in mind, I didn't show you how to solve a quadratic because it's assumed that you already know, just use a quadratic solver on your calculator or do it manually using the quadratic formula, whatever suits you. Now that we found this, we need to find the eigenvectors. I will borrow what I learned from up here, and I'll start with the eigenvalue of eight, and using this matrix, I'll substitute eight where I see the lambda. Five minus eight is negative three, three, seven, and negative seven. I will row reduce this matrix where it ends up becoming negative three, three, and zero, 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 zero. Once again, I'm assuming that you know how to row reduce a matrix, and I can go even a step further by dividing all of row one by negative three. If I do that, that becomes a one, that becomes a negative one. In this row now, we have a leading one in column one, but we don't have a leading one in column two anywhere in this matrix. So I will set, this is x sub two, I'll set x sub two equal to t, because remember, it doesn't have a leading one. And the equation for row one is x1 minus x2 is equal to zero, setting that equal to t, and then set that equal to zero. Bring that over, I get x sub one is equal to t. And I'll create a column vector for this information where x sub one has a t value or a t coefficient of one, and x sub two has a t coefficient of one. So this is the eigenvector for the eigenvalue of eight. Let's redo this for when the eigenvalue is negative two. I'm not gonna go through the whole process, I'm just gonna tell you what the eigenvector should be. When the eigenvalue is negative two, the eigenvector for this should have been the following. We don't wanna use fractions as elements, we can change them. I can multiply row one by seven, and the same can be done over here. This is the eigenvector that we need, and this one. 
putting these together, putting these together will give us the matrix P, 1 and 1, negative 3 and 7. The next step in this process is to find D and, using the formula that I showed you at the beginning, the inverse of P. D is dependent on the order in which you place this in. So you know how we put 1 and 1 in the first column and negative 3 and 7 in the second column? Well, that means that 8 needs to be the first element in the diagonal matrix and negative 2, the second element. So we found our P, we found our D. We need to find the inverse of P. The inverse of P requires that you know the trick to finding the inverse of a matrix. You first find the determinant and you reciprocate the determinant. So the determinant of this would be 1 times 7, that's 7, minus the product of these two, which is negative 3. So 7 plus 3, that's 10. We reciprocate that, we get 1 over 10, and we multiply it to. This element goes up here, that element goes down there, this element changes its sign and so does that one. So we get positive 3 and negative 1. This will serve as the inverse of P. You have to remember this trick. And now we multiply 1 tenth to each of these elements. 7 over 10, 3 over 10, negative 1 over 10, and 1 over 10. And using this formula, this one right here, I'll multiply P times D. So P, where was it? Over here, 1, negative 3, 1, and 7 times d raised to the power of 3. So I will raise this to the power of 3 and that to the power of 3. 8 to the power of 3 is 512. And 2 to the power of 3 is negative 8. And don't forget this matrix as the inverse being multiplied at the very end. And that will give us the answer to 8 to the power of 3. Now to save time, I'm not going to show you how to multiply three matrices, but if you do it correctly, your final matrix should look like this. That's the answer to question number one. In question number two, with A as given below, where A is being raised to the power of 100, we obtain P, P to the power of negative one, and D as shown. As you can see, there are no matrices shown, but the point of this question is that if you're given P, the inverse of P, and D, whatever D happens to be, you will raise each of the elements within that diagonal to the power of 100. And then you multiply that with P and that subsequently with the inverse of P. That's all it takes. And you end up with A to the power of 100. So there you have it. That is how to compute powers of a matrix.